It is one of the coldest regions on Earth. Remote and unforgiving. People who have lived above the Arctic Circle for generations have always depended on wildlife for survival. We've been here for thousands of years, hunting the animals that migrate here. Helping sustain a way of life that may seem primitive. We believe that the animals give themselves to us. The whales, the seals, the fish, the birds. Are you happy, big boy? You're going to run and lead, you big asshole, OK? But many in the far north don't want to abandon traditions they hold dear. On a trail like this, you just feel like you're on a magic carpet or something. You're just flying. But the Arctic is a world in flux, warming twice as fast as any other place on Earth. What seems like a slight uptick in temperature, a few degrees over 50 years, is transforming this world. Small villages like Point Hope, tucked away in the far northwestern corner of Alaska, are wrestling with the loss of culture and lifestyle. You know, the ocean is our garden. The animals are our, our identity as a people. They've been our clothing, our shelter, our food, our spirituality as a people. You know, we've been here for thousands of years, hunting and gathering. Residents here like to say Point Hope is the oldest continually inhabited community in North America. For more than 2,500 years, the Inupiat have handled the worst that winter could throw at them and found a way to make a living where the ocean can be solid ice nine months out of the year. There are no roads leading in or out of Point Hope. Just a lone frozen airstrip to carry people and goods. My Eskimo name, my Inupiat name is Akwak. In English, she's called Caroline Cannon, a tireless fighter for the traditional Inupiat way of life. Growing up, I think everybody, the whole community was one big unity family. We cared for each other when, when one was less fortunate, whether it be, you know, because in order to survive, you had to be a hunter. We, we rely on subsistence. Always taking what the land and the sea provides. Cannon says Point Hope conquered the harsh environment, survived disease and other ills brought in by the outside, but now could be facing the greatest threat to its future ever. The simple fact the Arctic is warming faster than any other place on Earth. It rains in January, it rains in February. We, we didn't even get snow till January this year. Born in Point Hope, Steve Umatuk has lived here almost all his 53 years. He's held just about every kind of job in town. Mayor, fire chief, head of the tribal council. But he is probably best known here as the man keeping the oral history of the community alive. So this is a polar bear tooth? Yeah, that's a polar bear tooth. Where did you find this? Um, in the old village over there. This is an old lantern. This is the old village of Point Hope, old bones bleached by the Arctic sun and wind that stand as silent sentinels to a time gone by. Almost all of this old town was swallowed by the sea, a victim of changing weather and the erosion that comes with it. What's left of that village is only 3%. 97% of those houses is out in the ocean. See, the population of Point Hope at, at the highest peak in 1800s was around 4,000 people. Before modern wonders such as electricity came to the region in the mid-1970s, whalebone served as the structure of homes. Most walls were sod, carved from the earth, providing the only shelter from the outside. And some say it is staggering how little people outside this remote region understand the people and the culture, including U.S. lawmakers who hold considerable sway over this area. It's frustrating when they think that you're still living in igloos and all this other stuff. Today, scores of homes pop out of the snow and ice. There are about 900 people in the town. Some things don't change. Kids still find a way to create their own fun. 
Now Point Hope has electricity 24 hours a day, indoor plumbing, and a state-of-the-art school for students who proudly boast the nickname, the Harpooners. <laughs> students in Point Hope learn about their rich culture from a very young age. But above all, they learn respect for their elders, a cherished member of the communities in the high north. Respect them and when they tell you to do something, do it, and they'll tell you how to well, they'll tell you how to hunt. But the past is rearing its ugly head. There's talk of having to uproot the community and move once again because of the ever-present enemy, erosion. When I was going there, you could go 100 yards further. We lost a lot of land in a short period, you know, in the last 40 years, um, the erosion. The greatest threat to their way of life is the fact sea ice is thinning, but it's still freezing up here. And hours on end on the ice take their toll. Using his handmade parka the same way his ancestors did for warmth, Umatak has spent decades out on the ice hunting bowhead whales. I wouldn't get cold at night, you know, I could, I could sleep sitting down. This is polar bear and wolverine. Can't, they don't get frosty, keeps it warm. Big old bear track. Like so many in the small Arctic village, Umatuk's cousin, Wally Lisborne, heads out on the ice. Maybe 10, 11 footer. Looking for something to help sustain his family. Pretty big. Here, patience is a virtue and disappointment comes with the territory. This is mid-April, when spring is in full bloom in much of the Northern Hemisphere. In Point Hope, the sun is out 18 hours a day. The community is gearing up for the major event of the season. Nothing is more important to their subsistence way of life than whaling. Six kilometers out on the frozen Bering Sea, the ice may appear incredibly thick, but the people of Point Hope see something entirely different, something that concerns them. Back in the mid-80s, maybe it was thicker. At least four to six feet thick. Now it's not. It's two to four feet thick. This isn't just an opinion from a soft-spoken native Alaskan. There are a lot of scientists here at Ground Zero in climate change, trying to determine what's going on in the atmosphere and why the sea ice is melting. It's very clear the ice is in a rapid decline, and, and um, we don't completely understand it, but we're getting better at it. It's caused by changes in the environment, including warming in the atmosphere and, and warming in oceans. While scientists and the outside world are catching on, it's something people of the North have known for years. Fifteen years ago when we started up here, the elders were talking about it, but now it seems to be a common, accepted idea in the community that things are changing. The Polar Research Group at the University of Illinois has been keeping track of daily satellite images going back to 1979, detailing the dramatic reduction of ice above the Arctic Circle. There's no getting around the significant melting taking place as the Earth gets warmer. To people monitoring the ice, the images are sobering. But living above the Arctic Circle, people notice the subtle changes that come with the seasons. Thick, strong sea ice is a necessity to a subsistence lifestyle. Without it, people here run the risk of losing centuries of culture, and with it, skills needed to feed a community. We have to pull up a whale on ice. You're talking a 30-foot whale is 30 tons. A 50-foot whale is 50 tons. And you pull it up on the ice, and if the ice is too thin, it keeps breaking. Whaling season comes to Point Hope as winter gives way to longer, warmer spring days. It breathes new life into the community after months of bitter cold and complete darkness. The flush look. The, this twinkle in everybody's eye. Everybody's all happy. Everybody's saying welcome home and good luck. Home from his job in Anchorage, 
Rex Rock Jr. is in Point Hope to head out whaling with his father's crew. It's something he's been doing more than two-thirds of his young life. Their team will head out in this, called an umiak, the Inupiat name for the small boat. This was built by his grandfather decades ago. But the rocks have made a modern concession to keep memories of an old man in the sea alive. Well, I guess traditionally it wouldn't be this, uh, this fiberglass. It would be bearded seal skin or uh, it could be walrus. But bearded seal skin, what they find is a little easier to, to work with. It's Rock's job to get everything together. Knives, cords, and the new harpoon. You would just launch it like this. And make sure the boat is prepared for the many weeks out on the ice and water. More than 500 kilometers to the east is the northernmost city in the United States. We were welcomed with a late season storm something the locals call a mini blizzard. We are on one of the main roads cutting through the heart of Barrow, Alaska. If there is one thing people living above the Arctic Circle say they notice, it is the unpredictability of the weather. They say winters are getting warmer. That means sea ice is freezing later in the year and thawing earlier. They also say they see freakishly powerful storms throughout the year. 